Hey everybody, this is Miss Batty with our lesson four in our series on matter and energy and ecosystems. Today we are going to continue our investigations of how carbon dioxide gets into the air of an ecosystem. What you're going to need for this lesson today is a piece of paper, a pencil or a pen, or if you have a Schoology lesson or handout available from your teacher, you can go ahead and open those up. Something I recommend if possible is that you have that friend or that family member that you can chat with and check in with throughout this lesson. I also recommend that if you have access to Amplify and the Matter and Energy Digital Model, that you go ahead and open that as we are going to be using it today. In our last lesson, we were trying to understand where all of the carbon dioxide is coming from. We know that in the biodome, the carbon dioxide is decreasing right around the time that the biodome began to fail. Now we know this is not a good thing because carbon dioxide is something that is required to make energy storage molecules. In our last lesson, we saw that producers, consumers, and decomposers are all producing carbon dioxide. Now, in our article of Feast for Decomposers, we read about a process called cellular respiration. Today, we are going to look a little bit more into this process. Do all of the organisms that produce carbon dioxide do this cellular respiration? What exactly is happening during this process to produce those carbon dioxide molecules? As I mentioned, we are going to use the digital model to zoom in a little and really see this process in action. If you have access to the digital model, you can go ahead and pause this video and open up the digital model and start exploring yourself. If not, you can follow along with me. All right, so here we are in our matter and energy digital model, and I'm gonna start um, the simulation so that we can take a look at what's going on. Now we learned in our last lesson that producers, the consumers, and the decomposers are all giving off carbon dioxide. I don't see at this time that the dead matter is producing carbon dioxide, but we'll come back to that. I'm gonna zoom into the decomposers because we know that the way that decomposers make carbon dioxide is through a process called cellular respiration. Now, if we're watching here, it looks like I see oxygen and energy storage molecules coming in from the outside. And if I pause it for just a moment, I just saw that carbon dioxide and water are being released. So let's watch again, um, and maybe we'll slow it down a little. So we've got from outside, we've got these oxygen molecules and energy storage molecule, um, which we found out the decomposers get from eating things like poop and uh, dead material, which is kind of crazy. So they've got their energy storage molecule. And we read in our article that to use the energy, they have to break them down. And the process they do that with is called cellular respiration. So this must be it happening here. Now we know, oh, and, I, and we're gonna see what it makes, but I saw them come together in a similar way as we saw with photosynthesis. So this is telling us that this cellular respiration process also seems to be some sort of chemical reaction that's occurring. And if we look, it looks like what is being spit out is water and carbon dioxide. Okay, so I see that in this process, and we can speed it up um, a little bit, we've got things coming in, just like with photosynthesis, and things going out. They seem to be kind of the opposite reactions to one another. So that was the decomposers. Let's go ahead and take a look in the secondary consumers. And again, I'm seeing a similar thing. I'm seeing this thing called the mitochondrion in here. OK, 
Okay, so they also are doing this cellular respiration process. Again, here in my primary consumers. Finally, in the producers. Okay, so we actually see that they are doing this cellular respiration process, but you might have noticed that they've also got something else going on, and that is because they're doing photosynthesis. So if I pause for a moment, it looks like these are the exact opposite. We've got photosynthesis happening over here and uh, cellular respiration happening over here. And if we watch carefully, got carbon dioxide and water, we've got oxygen and energy, and if you saw before it, it zoomed out, um, the exact opposite happened. So they seem to be two different reactions occurring. Now, at the moment, I don't see any of the dead matter producing any carbon dioxide. And because it's dead matter, they don't have active cells that work, right? The living things have cells that are working. Now, if I click on berry, that doesn't seem to release any carbon dioxide. Ah, but if I click on burn, I am seeing that the dead matter is also capable of releasing carbon dioxide. Interesting. So it seems this cellular respiration process is the thing that is creating this carbon dioxide that gets into the ecosystem. And all of the living things in the ecosystem are doing this process. It is a chemical reaction, just like photosynthesis. And this time it is between reactants of glucose and oxygen that are then releasing energy from those energy storage molecules and rearranging those atoms to form carbon dioxide and water molecules. So I thought this would be really interesting to see these two processes uh, side by side. And as you might notice, the reactants of photosynthesis are the products of cellular respiration. Here, the products of photosynthesis are the reactants of cellular respiration. And the way that energy involved, is involved here is really interesting. We have energy from the sunlight causing that photosynthesis reaction to happen, but the cellular respiration process is actually giving off energy from those energy storage molecules. So that's really cool. We can now see how these energy storage molecules are being made and also how these carbon dioxide molecules are being made.